Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 415. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about financial scams. And you're going to learn how to avoid some common financial scams that I keep running across and don't want you to get caught up in. This started out when recently I got an email offer to buy a domain name of mine for $55,000. And it came from a Japanese business who said they had a very healthy budget and an investor who wanted to buy my domain name. And what price did I want for it? Well, of course, I thought this was very scammy sounding and I really didn't take it seriously. I was thinking, this is just ridiculous. Obviously, something fake. But I thought, I'll test it and send a few words back. So I just said, I would consider any offers. That's all I said. Didn't sign my name, didn't try to say, hello, Mr. So-and-so, and be really personable. I just said, eh, I'd consider any offers just to see what the next email would say. I was pretty sure it was going to come back as a scam, but I wanted to see. So the next email that came back was an email about details for the transaction, which A, I hadn't agreed to the transaction, B, I hadn't agreed to the price, and C, I was thinking, wait a minute, you're way ahead of yourself, buddy. (laughs) This is not something that's happening. I just, you know, I just basically didn't shut it down on the first email. So when the second email came back, it had all these details about how the transaction should go, what they expected on my part for me to do. And again, red flag, red flag, red flag. I'm thinking this is totally a scam. Here they are trying to move forward with something that hasn't even been agreed upon. And then they mentioned this German escrow account. And my friend had said to me, oh, that's a definite red flag because there are scams going around with German escrow accounts. So then I thought, well, that's an interesting thing. What else is in there that tells me that this is a scam? So when I looked closer, they mentioned a 5% commission that would be paid for by both parties, quote unquote. And they also said they wanted me to pay my end to them, which would be 5% of $55,000 or $2,750. And I said, aha, there it is. There is where they're trying to get me to pay money. And that is where the scam is, is that there is no payment coming to me, of course. Not that I ever believed that there was, especially $55,000 as their opening offer. Come on, really? I don't think so. <laughs> so having them say, oh, well, we need some commission for you to pay. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, that's where the scam is. They're trying to get me to pay this commission so I supposedly can get this larger payment from them. And I went online to see if there are more scams. And that's when I found that there is a real estate scam that is happening that I wanted to share with you an article about and just make you aware of this scam that is going around. This article about the real estate scams was really interesting because they are trying to intercept money that's going to the title company. So apparently this woman was scammed out of $52,660.57, which she says she knows by heart, because that was the 20% down payment and closing costs on her home that they were going to pay. And what happened was right before they were supposed to 
wire the money to the title company, they got an email from someone who told them to send the money somewhere else. So apparently these hackers hack into your email and then they find out when you're in the middle of this real estate transaction, they're hacking somehow people in these transactions. And so anyway, they told her to send the wire to a different place. So fortunately, she got suspicious and called her real estate agent. So here is a little bit about the case and what happened. It says, in Alan's case, the thieves interceded just hours before the closing. Quote, they waited and they watched like a damn gator in the water, she said. She was on her way to the bank when she got an email that appeared to be from her title company with a change of wire transfer instructions. Suspicious, Alan reached out to her real estate agent, who she says simply apologized for the hassle. Alan wired the money at 9.34 a.m. Central Time. By a lucky coincidence, the real title company reached out to Alan shortly after to give her the final closing instructions and confirm the money would be wired. They were like, you wired the money? Who did you wire it to, she said. So this is how she almost lost her new home down payment, but they were able to recover because they were able to catch it very quickly. But if they hadn't been able to catch it very quickly, they likely wouldn't been able to recover the money, which is really scary. And the FBI says that the chance of recovery is very slim. So here's the article and what it says about how to avoid falling victim to this kind of a scam. Number one, verify everything. It goes on to say, when you're buying a house, you expect to hear from your real estate agent, attorney, and other parties in the transaction. So you're naturally less suspicious of emails that appear to be from those people, which thieves take advantage of. Don't assume any emailed instructions or account details are legit. You have to call and you have to confirm. Having some kind of redundancy and some kind of check in place is the number one way of avoiding being hit by these frauds. But don't call the phone number in the email. That may redirect you to the thieves. Instead, call a number you know would be correct for the title agency or the mortgage broker based on a web search or previous interactions or, of course, their business card. Number two, be suspicious of changes. Last-minute changes to closing procedures are a red flag, especially requests that you change the payment method or send money to a different bank or account. Real estate closings are a standard process, and it would be unusual for those details to change. Again, verify any changes by calling the other parties involved. Trust your instincts on this kind of stuff. We tend to know when something smells a little fishy. Number three, secure your emails. Given the risk of compromise, don't send sensitive data such as bank account details or your social security number over email. Use a secure file transfer service to send documents required for that home purchase or a secure client access portal that the business, be it your title company, mortgage broker, or whatever, has set up. Be suspicious of communications that don't follow whatever protocol has been set up. For example, a request that you email details that you've previously securely submitted via a portal. Number four, use good cybersecurity hygiene. This scam begins with thieves gaining access to the computer or email account of someone involved in the real estate transaction. Make sure that someone isn't you. Keep your antivirus software and operating system up to date. Use unique complex passwords and enable protections such as two-factor authentication when available. Don't click on any suspicious links in emails, he said. Number five, pick a secure payment method. Ask about your options for paying the down payment and closing costs. You may be able to bring a paper certified check or cashier's check to the closing or an agent's office ahead of time, avoiding the possibility the funds end up in a fraudster's hands. Then there is a part here that goes on to say what to do if you're victimized. If you fall prey to one of these scams, you'll need to act immediately. The odds of recovering the stolen money aren't in your favor. Money sent via a wire transfer is quickly moved electronically from your bank to the recipient bank and then into the payee's account. You typically have only a tiny window for the banks to halt a transfer or freeze the account before fast-moving thieves withdraw the funds. Once the money is out of that account, it's gone. Even if you spot and report the fraud within 24 hours, you might not get your money back. 
I don't want to set false expectations for consumers, he said. The chance of recovery here is slim. Because the consumer is the one to authorize the wire transfer, protections covering unauthorized financial transactions don't apply. The banks will work with you, but you may bear some or all of the liability for lost funds, depending on the details and extent of the crime. Allen's almost immediate notice of the fraud was instrumental in recovering her money because the bank was able to freeze the thief's account. In the end, she lost just $430, including $70 in wire transfer fees. She's quick to point out she was extremely lucky. Here's how to take action if you fall prey to a scam. Alert the banks. Immediately call your bank or financial institution. You may be able to call back the wire. Alert the bank on the receiving end of the wire, too. They often can work with your bank to halt the transfer or freeze the recipient's account. And then call in law enforcement. File a local police report detailing what happened. Call your local FBI office and file a complaint with the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center. At the FBI level, we have briefed all of our 56 field offices and all of our resident agencies, and they are equipped to rapidly respond. End of article. Well, I hope that helps you understand a little bit of some of the scams going on in there. Of course, there's always email scams where they want you to click a link and that infects your computer, so you don't want to click on any suspicious links. There's that crazy email of the African who is related to the Zimbabwe prince that has, you know, millions of dollars they want to send you. Of course, that one is going around again. You don't want to click on that email or open that one up. Uh, So just be very, very careful. And so be paying attention for any email from any foreign country. That should be a red flag right there. Uh, And certainly the German escrow account is another red flag. And the fact that they have any request of you to pay money for anything is another red flag. So That plus all of the things that can happen when you're making a large transaction or wiring money anywhere, just make sure that nobody pulls a fast one on you at the last minute trying to switch where you're sending the money and that the instructions don't change at the last minute. That should also be a big red flag for you. So hopefully these things will help you stay out of trouble and stay away from scammers and be more aware But I know you're already on the ball and already aware of these things. I just wanted to share the latest information with you, keep you up to date on what's going on out there. And if you have seen any of these things or have any of these things happen to you, now you're up to date and fully aware of what to do so you're not defrauded. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, please hit the subscribe button so you are updated with all the latest podcasts as soon as they're available. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.